Today is day three for the Come Follow Me study for this week, June 17th through the 23rd. Jesus Christ will come to redeem his people. Alma 8 through 12. Wednesday, June 19th, 2024, Alma 10. Lehi descended from Manasseh. Amulek recounts the angelic command that he care for Alma. The prayers of the righteous cause the people to be spared. Unrighteous lawyers and judges lay the foundation of the destruction of the people. About 82 B.C. Amulek delivers a confirming witness. Alma 10, 1-2 Now these are the words which Amulek preached unto the people who were in the land of Ammonihah, saying, I am Amulek, I am the son of Gedona, who was the son of Ishmael, who was a descendant of Amminadi, and it was that same Amminadi who interpreted the writing which was upon the wall of the temple, which was written by the finger of God. In his introduction, Amulek mentions he is the son of Gedona, who is the son of Ishmael, who was a descendant of Amminadi, who interpreted the writing which was upon the wall of the temple, which was written by the finger of God. This is the only time Amminadi is mentioned, and our present Book of Mormon gives no further details concerning the writing written by the finger of God upon the wall of the temple. Evidently, an account of this incident was recorded on the large plates of Nephi, but Mormon did not include it in his abridgment. Alma 10.3 But Amminadi was a descendant of Nephi, who was the son of Lehi, who came out of the land of Jerusalem, who was a descendant of Manasseh, who was the son of Joseph, who was sold into Egypt by the hands of his brethren. In further identifying himself, Amulek mentioned that his forefather Amminadi was a descendant of Nephi, who was the son of Lehi, who was a descendant of Manasseh, who was the son of Joseph, who was sold into Egypt. Earlier in the Book of Mormon, it was mentioned that Lehi was a descendant of Joseph. However, Joseph had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And this is the first time the Book of Mormon indicates that Lehi was a descendant of Joseph's eldest son, Manasseh. Elder Erastus Snow explained in 1882, the prophet Joseph informed us that the record of Lehi was contained on the 116 pages that were first translated and subsequently stolen, and of which an abridgment is given us in the first book of Nephi, which is the record of Nephi individually, he himself being of the lineage of Manasseh, but that Ishmael was of the lineage of Ephraim, and that his sons married into Lehi's family, and Lehi's sons married Ishmael's daughters, thus fulfilling the words of Jacob upon Ephraim and Manasseh in the 28th chapter of Genesis, verse 16, which says, And let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Thus these descendants of Manasseh and Ephraim grew together upon this American continent, with a sprinkling from the house of Judah from Uluk descended, who left Jerusalem eleven years after Lehi and founded the colony, afterwards known as Zarahemla, found by Mosiah, thus making a combination, an intermixture of Ephraim and Manasseh with the remnants of Judah. And for aught we know, the remnants of some other tribes that might have accompanied Mulek. And such have grown up upon the American continent. Lehi's lineage as a descendant of Manasseh is partial fulfillment of a promise to Joseph of old. Shortly before his death, Joseph of Egypt related assurances that the Lord made unto him concerning his posterity. I have obtained a promise of the Lord, that the Lord God will raise up a righteous branch out of my loins, and it came to pass that they shall be scattered again, and a branch shall be broken off, and shall be carried into a far country. Nevertheless, they shall be remembered in the covenants of the Lord, when the Messiah cometh. Thus saith the Lord God of my fathers unto me, Wherefore the fruit of thy loins shall write, and the fruit of the loins of Judah shall write, and that which shall be written by the fruit of thy loins, and also that which shall be written by the fruit of the loins of Judah, shall grow together into the confounding of false doctrines, and laying down of contentions, and establishing peace among the fruit of thy loins, and bringing them to a knowledge of their fathers in the last days, and also to the knowledge of my covenants, saith the Lord. Prior to their flight into the wilderness, Lehi and Ishmael, both descendants of Joseph, lived with their families in Jerusalem, which is part of the kingdom of Judah. One writer suggested an explanation for why Lehi's ancestry, though descended from Joseph, lived in Jerusalem, which for the most part was made up of descendants of Judah. Some students of the Book of Mormon have wondered how descendants of Joseph were still living in Jerusalem in 600 BC when most members of the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh 
were taken into captivity by the Assyrians about 721 BC. A scripture in 2 Chronicles may provide a clue to this problem. This account mentions that in about 941 BC, Azza, the king of the land, gathered together at Jerusalem all of Judah and Benjamin, and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh. These strangers out of Ephraim and Manasseh, who were gathered to Jerusalem in approximately 941 BC, may have included the forefathers of Lehi and Ishmael. Alma 10, 4 And behold, I am also a man of no small reputation among all those who know me. Yea, and behold, I have many kindreds and friends, and I have also acquired much riches by the hand of my industry. Amalek recounted to the people of Ammonihah the circumstances surrounding his conversion. He was a wealthy man, of no small reputation in the community. He knew the ways of the Lord, but had hardened his heart against them until an angel appeared to him. Alma 10, 5-6 Nevertheless, after all this, I never have known much of the ways of the Lord and his mysteries and marvelous power. And I said, I never had known much of these things, but behold, I mistake, for I have seen much of his mysteries and his marvelous power, yea, even in the preservation of the lives of this people. Nevertheless, I did harden my heart, and I was called many times, and I would not hear. What do you suppose Amulek meant when he said he was called many times, but would not hear? But this statement sometimes applied to both members of the church and non-members now. Doctrine and Covenants 39 And now behold, I say unto you, Thou hast rejected me many times because of pride and the cares of the world. President Ezra Taft Benson told the following story, which highlights the need for being attentive and open to heavenly guidance. Bishop John Wells, a former member of the presiding bishopric, was a great detail man and was responsible for many church reports. President David O. McKay and President Harold B. Lee used to relate an experience from his life that is instructive to us all. A son of Bishop and Sister Wells was killed in a railroad accident in Immigration Canyon, east of Salt Lake City. He was run over by a freight car. Sister Wells could not be consoled. She received no comfort during the funeral and continued her mourning after her son was laid to rest. Bishop Wells feared for her health, as she was in a state of deep anguish. One day, soon after the funeral, Sister Wells was laying on her bed in a state of mourning. The son appeared to her and said, Mother, do not mourn, do not cry, I am all right. He then related to her how the accident took place. Apparently there had been some question, even suspicion, about the accident, because the young man was an experienced railroad man, but he told his mother that it was clearly an accident. He told her that as soon as he realized that he was in another sphere, he had tried to reach his father but could not. His father was so busy with the details of his office and work that he could not respond to the promptings. Therefore, the son had to come to his mother. He then said, Tell father that all is well with me, and I want you not to mourn any more. President McKay used this experience to teach that we must always be responsive to the whisperings of the Spirit. These promptings come most often when we are not under the pressure of appointments and when we are not caught up in the worries of day-to-day -day life. Elder Neil A. Maxwell said, some of these otherwise honorable members mistakenly regard the church as an institution, but not as a kingdom. They know the doctrines of the kingdom, but more as a matter of resuscitation than of real comprehension. Casual members are usually very busy with their careers and the things of the world, much as honorable Amulek once was, called many times, but would not hear. He really knew concerning the truths of the gospel, but Amulek would not acknowledge that he knew. Elder Neil A. Maxwell also said, Amulek is a classic case of an essentially good man being out of touch with the great spiritual realities. He resisted the things of the Spirit because, though he was basically good, he was preoccupied or busy with the cares of the world. What can we learn from Amulek? President Dieter F. Uchtdorf, while serving in the first presidency, taught, perhaps like Amulek, you know in your heart that the Lord has called you many times, but you would not hear. Nevertheless, the Lord sees in you what he saw in Amulek, the potential of a valiant servant 
with an important work to do and with a testimony to share. There is service that no one else can give in quite the same way. Listen with your heart and follow the promptings of the Spirit. Alma 10, 6 continued, Therefore I knew concerning these things, yet I would not know. Therefore I went on rebelling against God in the wickedness of my heart, even until the fourth day of this seventh month, which is the tenth year of the reign of the judges. Notice in verse 6 how Amulek specified the exact day when the angel appeared to him. Why do you suppose he was so precise? Alma 10, 7 As I was journeying to see a very near kindred, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto me and said, Amulek, return to thine own house, for thou shalt feed a prophet of the Lord, yea, a holy man, who is a chosen man of God, for he has fasted many days because of the sins of this people, and he is unhungered, and thou shalt receive him into thy house and feed him. Moroni 7 Behold, I say unto you, Neither have angels ceased to minister unto the children of men. For behold, they are subject to him to minister according to the word of his command, showing themselves unto them of strong faith and a firm mind in every form of godliness. For it is by faith that miracles are wrought, and it is by faith that angels appear and minister unto men. Wherefore, if these things have ceased, woe be unto the children of men, for it is because of unbelief, and all is vain. Alma 10, 7 continued. And he shall bless thee in thy house, and the blessing of the Lord shall rest upon thee in thy house. The angel told Amulek that if he received the servant of the Lord, he would be blessed. God often blesses his children through his mortal servants. Alma 10, 8-11 And it came to pass that I obeyed the voice of the angel, and returned towards my house. And as I was going thither, I found the man whom the angel said unto me, Thou shalt receive into thy house. And behold, it was this same man, who has been speaking unto you concerning the things of God. And the angel said unto me, He is a holy man. Wherefore I know he is a holy man, because it was said by an angel of God. And again I know that these things, wherefore he hath testified, are true. For behold, I say unto you, that as the Lord liveth, even so has he sent his angel to make these things manifest unto me. And this he has done while this Alma hath dwelt at my house. For behold, he hath blessed mine house, and he hath blessed me, and my women, and my children, and my father, and my kinfolk. Yea, even all my kindred hath he blessed, and the blessing of the Lord hath rested upon us according to the words which he spake. What great blessing did Alma bring to Amulek? Doctrine and Covenants 84 And also all they who receive this priesthood receive me, saith the Lord. For he that receiveth my servants receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth my father, and he that receiveth my father receiveth my father's kingdom. Therefore all that my father hath shall be given unto him. John 13 Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Ammonihah lawyers seek to ensnare Amulek. Alma 10.12 and now when Amulek had spoken these words, the people began to be astonished, seeing there was more than one witness who testified of the things whereof they were accused, and also of the things which were to come according to the spirit of prophecy which was in them. Hugh Nibley said, Alma 10 is the legalistic chapter. It's on legalism and lawyers. It's, it packs a real wallop and shows immense insight. This was translated in 1829 before Joseph Smith had had any of his experience with lawyers. He was hauled into court and went through the routine 42 times. They were always bringing him to court. Americans were just as legalistic then as they are today. But remember that this was written before he had any of that experience at all. He knew nothing about lawyers or anything else. He had just lived on the farm all his life. This chapter is really something, and we're on verse 13 now. They began to question Amulek using cunning devices that they might catch them in their words, that they might find witness against them, that they might deliver them to their judges, that they might be judged according to the law, and that they might be slain or cast into prison. According to the crime, they would make it all legal, which they could make appear or witness against them. That's the whole business of lawyers, to make your side appear whatever it is. And that's the art of rhetoric, as Plato said, and that's why he damned it. The Greeks were shocked by this new art, the art of the lawyer, which made the worse appear the better reason. That's the skill of rhetoric. 
You can take either side and make it win. Whether it was good or bad had nothing to do with it. You won the case. That's what you were supposed to do. To make the worse appear the better reason shocked everyone. That's what we have here. Alma 10, 13-16. Nevertheless, there were some among them who thought to question them, that by their cunning devices they might catch them in their words, that they might find witness against them, that they might deliver them to their judges, that they might be judged according to the law, and that they might be slain or cast into prison, according to the crime which they could make appear or witness against them. Now it was those men who sought to destroy them, who were lawyers, who were hired and appointed by the people to administer the law at their times of trials, or at the trials of the crimes of the people before the judges. Now these lawyers were learned in all this arts and cunning of the people, and this was to enable them that they might be skillful in their profession. And it came to pass that they began to question Amulek, that thereby they might make him cross his words or contradict the words which he should speak. Satan says, Doctrine and Covenants 10, Deceive and lie and wait to catch, that ye may destroy. Behold, this is no harm. And thus he flattereth them and telleth them that it is no sin to lie, and that they may catch a man in a lie that they may destroy him. And thus he flattereth them, and leadeth them along, until he draggeth their souls down to hell. Alma 10.17 Now they knew not that Amulek could know of their designs, but it came to pass, as they began to question him, he perceived their thoughts, and he said unto them, O ye wicked and perverse generation, ye lawyers and hypocrites, for ye are laying the foundations of the devil, for ye are laying traps and snares to catch the holy ones of God. President Joseph Fielding Smith said, We must be prepared to defend the truth, and as men holding the holy priesthood, which was restored by the opening of the heavens, and the laying on of hands by holy messengers sent from the presence of the Lord, be prepared to protect the members of the church against the cunning devices that are being deployed in opposition to the gospel, to wean away our members, who are not sufficiently informed, and who lack the abiding testimony which faithfulness and obedience will ensure to every soul. War, quietly, insidiously, and with some fear because of the spread of the truth, is being waged against the restoration of divine truth. Alma 10, 18-23 Ye are laying plans to pervert the ways of the righteous, and to bring down the wrath of God upon your heads, even to the utter destruction of this people. Yea, well did Mosiah say, who was our last king, when he was about to deliver up the kingdom, having no one to confer it upon causing that this people should be governed by their own voices. Yea, well did he say, that if the time should come that the voice of this people should choose iniquity, that is, if the time should come that this people should fall into transgression, they would be ripe for destruction. And now I say unto you, that well doth the Lord judge of your iniquities. Well doth he cry unto this people by the voice of his angels, Repent ye, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yea, well doth he cry for the voice of his angels, that... I will come down among my people with equity and justice in my hands. Yea, and I say unto you that if it were not for the prayers of the righteous, who are, not in, who are now in the land, that ye would have now been visited with utter destruction. Yet it would not be by flood, as were the people in the days of Noah, but it would be by famine and by pestilence and the sword. But it is by the prayers of the righteous that ye are spared. Now therefore, if ye will cast out the righteous from among you, then will not the Lord stay his hand. But in his fierce anger he will come out against you. Then ye shall be smitten with by famine, and by pestilence, and by the sword. And the time is soon at hand, except you repent. Genesis 18 And Abraham drew near, and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? For adventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place of, for the fifty righteous that are within? Peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again, and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there shall thirty be found. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, peradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, O let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak 
Yet but this once, peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Note in Alma 10, 22-23, the effect that the prayers of the righteous had upon a nation. The prayers of the righteous also kept the Nephites from being destroyed later during the days of Captain Moroni and Samuel the Lamanite. President Spencer W. Kimball said the following about our day. There may be many, upright and faithful, who live all the commandments and whose lives and prayers keep the world from destruction. Elder J. Reuben Clark, Jr. said, The Lord has made it plain to us that if we are not a prayerful people, if we fail to remember the King of this land, Jesus Christ, we can lose all of these blessings. We should hearken to the words of Amulek, and so it seems to me that what we need in this fair land of ours is a shining example of prayerfulness, and the Latter-day Saints are the people who are chosen to exemplify to the world the power of prayer. Every Latter-day Saint home should be a house of God, where the altar of prayer is ever in use, and where the proper example is set to our children in supplicating God for divine guidance in all our endeavors. Once the righteous are destroyed or removed from Ammonihah, the prayers of the righteous ceased to protect the city, and every living soul of the Ammonihahites was destroyed. Elder Richard L. Evans said, If we don't change direction, we will arrive at where we're going. How might this apply to the people of Ammonihah? Alma 10, 24-32 and now it came to pass that the people were more angry with Amulek, and they cried out, saying, This man doth revile against our laws, which are just, and our wise lawyers, which we have selected. But Amulek stretched forth his hand, and cried the mightier unto them, saying, O ye wicked and perverse generation, why hath Satan got such great hold upon your hearts? Why will ye yield yourselves unto him, that he may have power over you to blind your eyes, that ye will not understand the words which are spoken according to their truth? For behold, have I testified against your law? Do ye not understand? Ye say that I have spoken against your law, but I have not. But I have spoken in favor of your law, to your condemnation. And now behold, I say unto you that the foundation of the destruction of this people is beginning to be laid by the unrighteousness of your lawyers and your judges. And now it came to pass that when Amulek had spoken these words, the people cried out against him, saying, Now we know that this man is a child of the devil, for he hath lied unto us, for he has spoken against our law. And now he says, that he has not spoken against it. And again he has reviled against our lawyers and our judges, and it came to pass that the lawyers put it into their hearts that they should remember these things against him. And there was one among them whose name was Zeezrom. Now he was the foremost to accuse Amulek and Alma, he being one of the most expert among them, having much business to do among the people. Now the object of these lawyers was to get gain, and they got gain according to their employ. This week's activity page could help you summarize the events in Alma 8 through 10 for your children. You might want to help them find principles that made Alma and Amulet good missionaries. For example, they didn't give up. They testified of Christ, and they worked together. A song about missionary work, such as I Want to Be a Missionary Now, could give your children ideas about ways to share the gospel with their friends. Invite them to list ideas they find and people they could share the gospel with. You might even let them role play what they might say or do.